Welcome to Almost Here, Round the Corner Future Technology Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies poised to transform our lives for better or worse are the focus of this podcast. Almost Here means these technologies are now here and starting to be used or just around the corner from Bitcoin to artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. Coming to Dallas, Texas, September 14th, 15th, and 16th, 2018, the Blockchain and Future Tech Expo. This is going to be a gigantic conference of over 5,000 people. We're going to be talking about blockchain and its applications. We're going to be talking about quantum computing, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, and several other future technologies that are poised to and actually changing our lives as we speak. Here's why you should attend. As you may know, early adopters are the ones that investigated and profited from things like the gold rush in the 1800s, from the dot-com boom in the 1990s, from the internet boom in 2005, from the smartphone explosion in 2007, from the real estate boom that ended in 2008, and of course, from the Bitcoin boom that started in 2012. Early adopters act now. They don't wait till later. They go out west first, in their covered wagons, they find the biggest gold nuggets. If you consider yourself an early adopter and you want to find the biggest nuggets, then you owe it to yourself to attend this upcoming conference. Blockchain is going to affect how we control and store our medical data, how we send money around the world, how we bank, and more. But artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and cybersecurity will play a pivotal role in our lives as well. And that's why our next event, September 14th to the 16th at the Dallas Convention Center, is going to have not only 5,000 plus attendees, but we'll showcase blockchain, AI, cybersecurity, quantum computing, and more. You want to get in on the coming gold rush of future tech and opportunity as an early adopter. Don't be left out. To register, go to bftexpo.com. That's blockchainfuturetechexpo.com. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This is Chris with the Future Tech Podcast. Welcome. Today, our guest is... Axel Schumacher with Shaboom.io. Welcome, Axel. How are you? Hi, Chris. Uh, I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thanks for asking. So give us a bit about your background. Oh, yes, absolutely. So I am a geneticist. I um, had my own research group. Um, so I worked a lot in the academic environment in the past and my research group was primarily um, working on complex diseases such as Alzheimer's disease, schizophrenia, or cancer. So after a few years, um, I moved then into the business world and joined a bioinformatics company after some time. And we were producing um, so-called precision medicine platforms or genomics platforms for the pharmaceutical industry. So that means after moving into this uh, new era of precision medicine where drugs are targeted to individuals, uh, pharmaceutical companies needed uh, solutions to support their research. And this is basically what we developed. After that, I uh, co-founded my own precision medicine company, just a small company, and now with my co-founders, we started Shivom, another precision medicine company focused on genomics on the blockchain. All right. So um, give us a definition of genomics so we have a, a clearer picture on that. Well, when we are talking about genomics, then we are uh, basically talking about everything that has to do with your DNA. This okay obviously starts with having your genome, so your long DNA sequences, of, um, of, which is stored in your cell sequenced. We need to have to read every base pair of the DNA. And then we can do all kinds of stuff with it. We can um, look at uh, disease predispositions in the genome. We can uh, uh, detect potential diseases. We can look at ancestry patterns where our ancestors lived and what uh, uh, what routes they took to where you are living now. 
and uh, we can use the information stored in the genome to predict what drugs uh, a person can uh, tolerate or uh, what a person should avoid, as well as looking into um, health care, so lifestyle changes that support well-being and fitness. And the whole, all these processes, all these things we can do, this is basically the field of genomics. Okay, very good. And so how does, uh, how does Shazoom operate with the blockchain and genomics together? What specific thing does it do? Okay, so this is uh, relatively complex, but I try to make it as simple as possible. Awesome. So what we are building is a massive global healthcare and genomics ecosystem. That means we are aiming at building the largest genomics data hub on the planet. So what people can do is they can either upload their own DNA sequence, if they have it already, because nowadays there are a lot of companies that offer a genomic uh, sequencing, and then you get the sequence and then you can just upload it from their service and upload it to our platform. In addition, you can get, if you have no own sequence stored, you can get a sequencing kit from us, and which we would send to you, and we could get your DNA um, sequenced, stored on our platform. The importance is now that we can store it in a decentralized way using blockchain technology. That means that this huge, large data set, you have to imagine a, a genome um, makes up around 200 gigabyte of data. So this can obviously not be stored on the blockchain itself. It has to be stored separately in an encrypted server, but it gets hashed and this information is stored on the blockchain itself. This has several advantages. I mean, first of all, it makes the whole data um, economy uh, behind possible. It makes it secure because um, genomic data or healthcare data in general, this is the most precious, most valuable thing you own. And you don't want to have anyone get access to it. By storing it with blockchain technology, we are avoiding problems that Hackers have, so cyber criminals have a single entry point to go into a database, download everything, and put it somewhere on the darknet. So we have a very important security component. In addition to that, to make it even more secure, we are adding a cryptographic privacy layer. That means every user of the platform can be anonymous. So all the data you provide to the platform is really secured and cannot be traced back. So even in the worst case scenario, if someone could penetrate um, our system, there would be no way to trace the data contained in it back to a user. And this is very important. This opens up another possibility. This is data sharing, where we come to the most important part of the whole thing. Any user can share, if they want to, their data with other people. This could be um, your physician or family members. Or if you want to, you could donate your data for research purposes, like clinical research. So pharmaceutical companies, they are very interested in such data, in genomic data and other healthcare data, and they pay money to access it, to analyze it, to find new cures and new drugs. Of course, other companies are doing the same thing. Like then the state, several genetic companies that um, sell the data of their users to the pharmaceutical industry. But in this, this case, the donor, the owner of the DNA sequence, they don't get anything. The companies take all the money. We are developed on the blockchain a completely new sharing economy. That means we take out all those middlemen and if a pharmaceutical company or any other research organization is interested in a DNA of a certain individual, for example, someone with a rare disease, then those people are directly paid on the platform by the uh, data buyer. So this is, um, this is extremely important. So there's an incentive to participate in research studies, and people can actually yeah, earn um, a certain amount of money. 
So the important thing uh, in this context is this: any user on the platform, they are in the power. They can decide what happens with their DNA and not the company itself. So we have no um, possibility to access your DNA sample. This is really managed by the user. The power is really with the user. They own the data, not we. And there we are very different to other companies. On the platform itself, um, of course, um, I mean, there must be a lot of purposes um, to go to our platform. And this is you can access healthcare services. That means using your DNA, algorithms can provide you with uh, wellness advice, fitness advice, with um, drug profiles, as I mentioned before, like uh, tell you what kind of drugs um, your body tel- tolerates and which you should really avoid because uh, we are all different. And we are different because we have different genomes. We have certain sequences. We have mutations in our DNA that makes us vulnerable to environmental influences or not. And this could be uh, what drugs we have to use, uh, what we eat, etc. And wanna, it's so important to know those patterns. I want to go back real quick to the um, the data being purchased by um, a buyer. What is the medium? Or is the user receiving tokens, or is it fiat, or how how does the transaction take place? Right. The transactions take place by our platform token. This is called the omics token. So all transactions or all services that are done on the platform, they're basically paid for by these tokens. And this has, again, uh, several advantages over like fiat. First of all, the transactions are much quicker. They take uh, place within seconds compared to days uh, eventually with fiat. We have a global um, ecosystem that means you can access services from all over the world. The idea behind this is that um, other third-party service providers from the healthcare space, so this can be any healthcare service you can imagine, they can dock their services or apps onto our platform. By doing this, uh, let's say a user who sits in San Francisco can access a service that comes from Tokyo or from Sydney or from somewhere from Brazil. And this would be, of course, very difficult to do with fiat because you would have to to exchange all the time currencies and this would be very expensive and very inefficient. But by using this omics token, we don't have this problem. Everything is smooth and quick and secure. That also means that... uh, all the processes accessing services are, are secure and temper proof so um this is basically how, how the whole system works how do you see um how do you see just a, a basic customer getting involved from the beginning um the beginning through kind of getting the tokens what kind of give us like some data that you might accumulate on the customer or a typical um, type of person that's going to respond to this so you ask basically what uh data we store from a customer? Yes. Nothing. (laughs) For us, every customer is anonymous. So because we are not really interested um, who you are. Uh, We just have, obviously, for certain um, services, we have to make sure that um, a person is eligible. Imagine there's a service that uh, has an age restriction. Yeah. If you have to make a constant decision, for example, to participate in a clinical study, a child should not be able to do this, right? So there are um, ways to um, basically show who you are, but this information is not stored. For that reason, we have this privacy layer on top of the blockchain. This privacy layer guarantees that, um, let's say, the platform gets information, okay, this user is uh, 23 years old and from the U.S. or from Japan or from somewhere in Africa. But then this information is not stored on the platform itself. And uh, accessing services on the platform then proceed in an anonymous way. Okay. Um, how do you onboard customers? Um 
Well, onboarding is, I mean, we have, we will have a, a normal web interface. We have, um, from all over the world, of course, we will get people that are interested in, uh, in those services. We will have a um, heavy marketing and explain then very in uh, easy terms how the platform works. The interesting part is that, of course, people have to understand a little bit about the economy and what possibilities they have. The really cool thing is that by using blockchain technology, we can use smart contracts to um, immediately specify what can be done on the platform, platform or what could not be done. Uh, i give you an example. Like We will get a lot of our clients or users by um, our collaborations with clinics or hospitals all around the planet. So we will work with uh, government, with, uh, with that clinics, research organizations, or patient support groups, and with physicians. And they can also help uh, patients to access the platform, also uh, healthy individuals to manage their health. Then they can specify, basically with, uh, after going through a questionnaire, um, what they want to do with their data. Do they want to share it or do they want to keep private their data? And this will be stored in a smart contract. Like we can exactly okay. specify, okay, my DNA should uh, be made available for uh, diabetes research, but I don't want to have uh, the possibility that my health insurance gets access to it or my government. This can be stored on a smart contract and cannot be changed by anyone but the data owner, right? So it's, it's very easy for someone to customize that smart contract for, as you mentioned, you know, let's say, let's say I have asthma and I'm interested in research studies, but I don't want my insurance to know uh, particularly about, you know, me having asthma for some reason. And that's just kind of an arbitrary um Yes, you know, help, oh, but it's a good, so, uh, that's a good example. Um, yeah. I mean, we haven't yet uh, worked through all the details. This is a, also for us a learning process, obviously, uh, because the, let's, let's call it the event space, what is possible in such an ecosystem is almost uh, endless. So we will start with uh, certain uh, questions that users have to answer to um, to help them basically the, this whole process to understand what is possible and uh, what they should look for, like uh, that they not just give a broad consent that everyone can access their DNA samples, for example. I mean, there are people that that want that. There are researchers, or uh, we, we know people from the Quantify Self movement that are free freely. Sh- sharing their private healthcare data on the internet. Yeah, this would also be possible if someone comes and says, hey, look, my genome is so cool, look at it, yeah, analyze it, and they want to share it, fine, you can do this also with the, um, with a platform. This would be a broad consent. But then people should be made, uh, be aware of uh, risks of sharing their data. And uh, we will work with um, ethics committees from all around the world, with patient support groups, and obviously with clinics to build smart contracts that makes it very easy for people to understand what it means to uh, share their data with others. Okay. So this is a process where so not we only think about what uh, should be done, but this is really a process where we collaborate with people from all around the world and our community, our Shivom community, to build really the best consent forms and the best um, onboarding procedures. Very good. So where are you in your development right now, in your roadmap? Okay, we are having um, a basic platform ready, um, so a proof of concept, uh, but we are still at very early stages. So we hope to, or so we aim to finish our funding round by uh, the end of April round. And then we start really heavily uh, with further development. The reason why we are not uh, spending too much uh, 
time into development now is that a complex platform like a precision medicine platform is heavily driven so the development of it by third party uh, uh, services that want to have access to our platform and of course by customers that are using the platform for example pharmaceutical companies and it's um, a very complex process so we need exact uh, feature lists and uh, co-development projects to uh, develop the platform further but we have already uh, several collaborators in the space which will help us to really move very quickly so we had, don't have to um, develop everything in-house for uh, storing solutions for the whole blockchain architecture for artificial intelligence component we have already partners on board uh, we haven't announced this now everything so i will not go into too much detail so everyone who wants to follow us can do this on uh, shivom.io and we will very soon announce um, many of our partners that are very well known in the field so and which are really the best uh, projects in the world in the field of blockchain and artificial intelligence okay, by the yeah. way so the, this this AI component, what I'm uh, referring to here, this is this is also very cool, because uh, imagine we collect really massive amounts of data, and there's no way that let's say classical bioinformatics algorithms can really deal with this data. So we have to apply deep learning algorithms, and so AI components to crunch this data and give give feedback to people so how they can improve their well-being and how they can live longer and healthier because this is just too complex i think our human brain is not able to really understand this data at this point and we have to find completely new ways of dealing with this data and artificial intelligence is really the best way forward to do this very good um before the podcast you mentioned um, a partnership with genetic technologies yes that's right. Um, right so one of our partners that we are that we can already talk about is um, the genetic technologies limited this is a diversified molecular diagnostics company from australia that primarily works um, have services the u.s market um, they are a provider of um, a breast cancer test this is a, which is very important to have uh, so called a, a first in class uh, the clinical validated risk assessment test for sporadic breast cancer and uh, in our collaboration we will develop um, further tests uh, in a similar field so that means we will provide this test also for other areas of the world not only for the US we will have a large project going on in India um, and at the same time we will co-develop the new diagnostic tests for several markets all around the world not only in the area of breast cancer but also in the field of so, cardiovascular diseases and um, even, even other diseases. Very good. We're running a little short on time. Axel, I was wondering if you could uh, give us more maybe contact information where people can find out more about you and how they can find more about Shaboom. Yeah, so all the information is really on our website. Um, uh, again, this is shivom.io, so S-H-I-V-O-M dot I-O. And, of course, we have, uh, if you go there, you'll find all the information uh, uh, that is available and all the questions uh, you may ask also in our social media channels. So we are on Telegram, uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, so you can really find us and uh, ask us questions. Of course, we have also, um, in a few days, a very uh, informative white paper on the website with all the information uh, going really into detail. So, and again, just contact us. We are um, almost uh, nonstop 24 hours on the social media channels, and we are really happy to 
uh, answer all questions. Very good. Well, Axel, thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Awesome. Axel Schumacher with Shaboom.io. <laughs> yes. Thank Very you so good. much. And we want to thank all of our listeners for joining us here today at Future Tech Podcast. We'll see you next time. Coming to Dallas, Texas, September 14th, 15th, and 16th, 2018, the Blockchain and Future Tech Expo. This is going to be a gigantic conference of over 5,000 people. We're going to be talking about blockchain and its applications. We're going to be talking about quantum computing, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, and several other future technologies that are poised to and actually changing our lives as we speak. Here's why you should attend. As you may know, early adopters are the ones that investigated and profited from things like the gold rush in the 1800s, from the dot-com boom in the 1990s, from the internet boom in 2005, from the smartphone explosion in 2007, from the real estate boom that ended in 2008, and of course, from the Bitcoin boom that started in 2012. Early adopters act now. They don't wait till later. They go out west first in their covered wagons. They find the biggest gold nuggets. If you consider yourself an early adopter and you want to find the biggest nuggets, then you owe it to yourself to attend this upcoming conference. Blockchain is going to affect how we control and store our medical data, how we send money around the world, how we bank, and more. But artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and cybersecurity will play a pivotal role in our lives as well. And that's why our next event, September 14th to the 16th at the Dallas Convention Center, is going to have not only 5,000 plus attendees, but will showcase blockchain, AI, cybersecurity, quantum computing, and more. You want to get in on the coming gold rush of future tech and opportunity as an early adopter. Don't be left out. To register, go to bftexpo.com. That's blockchainfuturetechexpo.com. Thank you. You have been listening to Almost Here, Around the Corner Future Technology Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Subscribe to this podcast, post to review, to discover more future technologies that are poised to transform our lives for better or worse, such as Bitcoin, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more.